Coming up, some NDSU football players are getting credit for quick-thinking, heroic, life-saving actions. A major drug bust on a North Dakota highway, what troopers say they recovered in the stop. And more free technology classes are coming to North Dakota residents. Hello and welcome to the Nightly Review. I'm Tom Tucker. We begin with a look at tonight's headlines. Then, in the one-on-one -on -one tonight, we hear from local media and publishing icon Bill Marcial Sr., the chairman of the board for Forum Communications, the parent company for WDAY Radio. This year at WDAY, we're celebrating 100 years of service, and tonight Marcial will talk about the role he played in helping make WDAY Radio what it is today. But first, tonight, five Bison football players from North Dakota State are being credited with saving a 29-year-old mother and her two daughters from a burning car in West Fargo. The car caught fire after it was struck by a crime suspect in another car being chased by police. The crash happened July 15th around 11.30 p.m. The five players involved are all sophomores, and the suspect was eventually captured by police and faces several charges, including reckless endangerment and driving under the influence. A woman is recovering after escaping from a fire at an apartment complex in South Fargo. We're told the woman jumped from a second floor window Thursday morning. It happened at a place on 23rd Street South. Smoke and fire was coming from several windows when crews arrived, but crews quickly put out the blaze and damage was limited to one unit. The woman did not require care at a hospital. Damage to the apartment is estimated at $25,000 and there's no word yet on a cause. An autopsy is being performed on a man's body after the body was found in Spring Lake near Langby, Minnesota. The body of 65-year-old Faustin resident Raymond Larson was found just after 9 o'clock Thursday morning. The sheriff's office and an ambulance crew responded to the scene. Investigators say they don't suspect foul play in the case so far. Well, after 10 weeks of training in the 5th Joint Academy, the Fargo and West Fargo Fire Departments graduated new recruits today. The graduation took place at City Hall in the City Commission Chambers. Fargo Fire Chief Steve Dirksen says the Joint Academy approach ensures new firefighters for both cities are equipped with the same knowledge and skills, allowing them to more effectively work together during critical incidents here in the FM Metro. The City of West Fargo has hired a new economic development manager. The city announced Casey Sanders Berglund will take the reins, serving as an advocate for local businesses. Her duties will include building relationships, business retention, and new business development. Sanders Berglund previously worked for the Fargo-Moorhead West Fargo Chamber of Commerce. The Boys and Girls Clubs at the Red River Valley are receiving extra support for what they call their STEAM curriculum. The agency has received $7,500 from the FM Area Foundation to support the existing MindWorks programs at seven of their locations. The program focuses on science, tech, engineering, art, and math, and aims to provide student-centered enrichment. Well, with nice weather forecast for the weekend, Detroit Lakes could be a fun place to spend some time if you're looking for something to do. The weekends are always packed with live music and events, but this weekend on Sunday, we're filling the DL City Park down by the pavilion and the beach. We've got uh, art in the park coming oh. on Sunday. Detroit Lakes Chamber of Commerce President Carrie Johnston says other things to enjoy include shopping and food trucks. A film festival is also happening in the city next week, and of course, We Fest begins on August 4th. The North Dakota Highway Patrol says they've seized about $840,000 worth of drugs during a traffic stop. Troopers stopped a rental car Tuesday near Bismarck and report finding six pounds of meth and 8,000 counterfeit oxycodone pills containing fentanyl. Two pistols were also found. Three people from Washington State were arrested and are now facing federal drug charges and weapons charges in the case. North Dakotans will have access to more free technology courses. The state has expanded its partnership with the Cisco Networking Academy Skills to Job program called Skills for All. North Dakota is now the first state to offer the online courses to all residents free of charge. The courses are meant to provide a path to a tech career and cover topics including cybersecurity, coding, and networking. The state already offers Cisco's courses for free, but the expansion now ups the number of courses offered to about two dozen. And the North Dakota Game and Fish Department is kicking off its annual wildlife photo competition. The watchable wildlife photo contest began in 1989. 
All photos submitted must be taken in North Dakota and feature non-game or game species or plants or insects. Photos must be submitted online and the submission deadline is set for October 3rd. Well, if you find the Nightly Review to be a better way to stay informed when it comes to news and happenings in the FM Metro, please take a moment to hit subscribe and the bell button below. We appreciate your support. A nice day weatherwise across the region. Hope you had a chance to get outside and enjoy it. I'll be doing that tonight while mowing the lawn. Let's check in now with meteorologist Justin Storm in the Skywatch Weather Center for a look at the forecast. Thanks, Tom. As we head through the remainder of this evening, partly cloudy conditions are going to continue, but clouds will increase throughout tonight with a low of 67. Wind will be around 10 to 20 from the southwest, with a slight chance for a few scattered showers and even some thunderstorms into early Saturday morning and throughout the morning of Saturday as well. Throughout Saturday afternoon, just a slight chance for a couple scattered showers and thunder showers with a high near 80. It'll be partly sunny with an east-northeast wind around 5 to 15, gusting as high as 25, and it will remain breezy for your Sunday, a little more sunshine with high temperatures in the mid-70s. It could happen to you or someone you love. One moment, one diagnosis can change everything. Thankfully, there's a program that helps caring people uplift families through a crisis. Lend a hand up, raising financial help and hope through community benefits and online campaigns. A program that boosts generosity so gifts go further. Lend a hand up helps you help your neighbors. Learn more and give at lendahandup.org. Welcome back to the Nightly Review. For tonight's one-on-one -on -one conversation, we're hearing from a local media and publishing icon. Bill Marcial Sr. is the chairman of the board for Forum Communications. That's the parent company of WDAY Radio and other media outlets. This year, WDAY is celebrating 100 years of service to people living in the Red River Valley. Tonight, Scott Hennon with AM 1100 The Flag sits down with Marcial to talk about the role he played in growing WDAY Radio to what it is today. It's an honor today to welcome the chairman of the board of Forum Communications to our conversation about the one year, 100 year celebration of WDAY Radio. Bill Marcel Sr., thank you for doing this, Bill. Well, it's my pleasure, Scott. You know, we've been a big part of WDAY since 1922, and uh, it's been a big part of our company and uh, an important part as well. 100 years. Talk a little bit about when. WDAY radio first came on your radio, became familiar to, to you as part of the family. Well, it, actually, I moved to Fargo in 1960, didn't know a whole lot about, you know, the market, the, the newspaper or DAY radio. But after I started working here, I had uh, kind of a semi, uh, well, I'd say a, not a structured uh, training program, but part of my duties eventually were to be involved in WDAY. Uh, so that's when I first got acquainted with WDAY, and I was about 1965. When did you understand how much your your spouse, Jane Marcial, a black, um, how much she revered WDAY radio? Well, you know, of course, Jane was born with uh, printer's ink in her blood, and part of that printer's ink was WDAY. So, you know, she had a deep a connection to DAY through the years and, and still does. She won't listen to any other radio station. Uh, and I might say you guys are doing a great job, but uh, so she's been connected to DAY right from the start. And how about to your father-in-law? What, what did, what did we talk a little bit about the black family and just how that had integrated as part of the, the bigger form entity? Well, when uh, Earl Reinecke put WDAY radio on air in 1922, uh, he was short of cash and he was looking in for investors. So he came to the blacks, black number two, uh, as I call them, there were three, number one, two, and three. So Jane's grandfather invested about 10%, I'm not quite sure of the money, uh, in WDAY Radio in 1922. Uh, then during the 30s, radio just ran into some tough times, so they came back to Norm Black, number two, and wanted some additional money. So at that point, the form bought 49% of WDAY Radio then. And then they put, the uh, DAY put the television on air in 1952. Form still owned 
And then in 1958, um, my father-in-law, Norm Black, number three, and Norman Reinecke reached sort of a disagreement. And uh, that's when the forum bought 100% or the other 51% of the company. Over the years, what have you heard most about the appreciation people have of that history and sort of the memories of WDAY back from the beginning? What's yeah. made WDAY radio so special? The personnel. I think it goes back and we've done some history on on WDAY and they always had great people. You know, of course, radio, as you well know, was was visual and uh, sound back in those days. And they had barn dances and they had bands that traveled all over. But but WDAY and my was always known for the quality of people that they had on the air. And then you had Ken Kennedy's and, you know, uh, Peggy Lee's and that type of person that, that helped. Uh, promote the station throughout the years, but it's, it's been a winner from, from day one. One person I remember very well is Don Dresser. Oh yeah. And all that was, you know, obviously later, but there were just iconic personalities, Boyd Christians, and just some, uh, some amazing uh, talent over the years, wasn't there? Bill Weaver before our time, you know, yeah. Bill was a sports guy when I first came to town. Yeah. They've had some great personalities and, uh, uh, you know, you've kept that, you know, that, I think the, the popularity of the people in tax that you guys have taken over the management of the company. Um, also, I think one of the things that people really appreciate is that this is unique to have a newspaper, a, a television, and a radio station affiliate like the, like they are over the years. I don't know how, how much people out there, I mean, I think people in the community know form communications and you know the radio and the TV and the newspaper, but nationwide, there's not many like that. No, not many left. We happened to be grandfathered in and the FCC changed the rules in the 60s and uh, would, would not allow a combination of the three to exist, but they grandfathered us and a number of other companies in. And I think at that point, there were like 28 markets in the country that had similar situations. Now we're down to about four or five. So as people have sold the radio or the television or the newspapers, they haven't been able to sell to one person to keep that kind of a combination uh, you know, available today. But that puts a lot of talent in the, in the stable, so to speak, all together having different, you know, skill sets, radio, TV, and a newspaper, you know, over the years that just helps you serve the people better, I well, guess, Well, right? it does, you know, but through the years, Scott, DAY and the forum were always competitors. Their news operations were completely separate. When I came on the scene, I encouraged that. I, you know, we didn't have common purchasing, which probably would have saved us money, but we wanted the two entities to be competitive, to compete with one another. Sure, it was good for the community that was family owned, and we wanted the best for radio, the best for television, and the best for newspapers. So it was a good combination. And because of that, we were, we were able to accumulate the resources to do the, you know, to do the proper job for our audiences and for the owners of the company. Some people would say, well, why in the world would you want entities you own competing against each other? Explain why. Well, because I think it's just good for business and it's good for the audience, whether it's print or uh, visual or, you know, audio, uh, the, uh, the audio part of it. I think it's just the competitive, competitiveness made everybody work harder and try to outdo one another. And that's just good business. I'd like to thank Bill Marcel Sr., the chairman of the board for Forum Communications, and Scott Hennon from AM 1100 The Flag for sharing their conversation with us tonight as we celebrate the 100-year anniversary of WDAY Radio. By the way, WDAY will be broadcasting live Monday from the Black Building and from Broadway Square. All the on-air personalities, anchors, and reporters, and I will be there. And from 11 o'clock till 1, we'll be serving up free hot dogs, pop, and games. So come on down and say hello. We'll enjoy having a chance to visit with you. Well, that will do it for this Friday night, June 7th, 2022. I'm Tom Tucker. Thanks for watching the Nightly Review and have a great weekend.